This video um, is going to go over two uh, examples of quadratic application. So let's look at the first one. If an object is projected upward from the top of a 144 foot building at 112 feet per second, its position in feet above the ground is given by this equation. S of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 112t plus 144, where t is the time in seconds after it was projected. Now, before we even start in on the A, B, and C of this problem, let's make sure you have a clear understanding of what's happening. So you have a building, pardon the artwork, that is 144 feet tall, and an object is projected upward off of that building. And at any moment in time, we can find out its position above the ground all right, so the distance off the ground from this equation. Remembering that when we use um, function notation, the left-hand side of the equation is just the announcement. There's no work to be done here. This just means, hey, the height at any given time is, and then here's your equation. So let's look at the first question. It's what is the height after two seconds? Another way to say that is, what is, this is A, what is S, of 2, which means all I have to do is fill the 2 in for the time, since this is given as time. So it's going to be negative 16 times 2 squared plus 112 times 2 plus 144, or negative 16 times 4 plus 2 times 112 is 224 plus 144 negative 64 plus 224 plus 144. So if I grab a calculator and I say negative 64 plus 224 plus 144, you can see that we get 304 feet. So it says the height after two seconds, S of t, equals 300 four feet. So that was the first thing. I should put feet here. The first part of the problem, it was fairly simple because we were just substituting a time into our equation for t. Let's look at the second part of the equation, or the second part of the question. When will the object be 180 feet above the ground? Well, we know that in two seconds, it's somewhere up here, it's at 304. So it must be coming back down. We want to know when it's going to be 180. Well, if this was 180 feet right here, you can see that it's going to hit that 180 mark two different times, here and here. And we also know that this time we're not talking about plugging in time. We're talking about plugging in a height. Well, what part of our equation represents the height? It's this, the S of t. So what I do is I write 180 equals negative 16t squared plus 112t plus 144. And how do we solve that? Well, we first need to get it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract a 180 here, and I get 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 112t, now I'm going to get my calculator again, I have a positive 144 minus 180 is a negative 36, so minus 36. Now I have a lot of choices here, I don't want to just jump to the quadratic formula. I'm going to first see if I can factor this, but I'd like to get um, the coefficient on my squared term to be positive, so I'm going to multiply my entire equation by a negative 1. That doesn't change the left hand side, but the 16 is now positive, the 112 is now negative, and the 36 is now positive. I would like it if I could um, factor out a 16, but I know that I can't because it won't go into 36. So I'm hoping that I can factor out at least a 4. So let's see, 
4, if I factor that out, I would be left with 4t squared minus, let's divide 112 by 4, and we end up with 28 t, and 4 goes into 36 nine times. This is manageable. I think I can factor that. So that would be a long process, meaning I'm looking for factors of positive 36 that combine to make negative 28. Now, maybe I can and maybe I can't. Let's see if we can. We would have 36 times 1, 18 times 2, 9 times 4, 3 times 12, 6 times 6, and unfortunately, as you can see, none of them make 28. So since I can't factor, I'm going to go to the next best choice, which is going to be the quadratic formula. So let's decide what we do with this 4 first. If I divide both sides of my equation by 4, I'm going to have 0 equals 4t squared minus 28t plus 9. So I'm going to identify my a, my b, and my c. a is 4, b is negative 28, and c is 9. Since it's equal to 0, I can do that. And now I'm going to say t equals the opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. t equals 28 plus or minus, now I don't know 28 squared off the top of my head, so let's 28 squared is 784, negative 16 times 9, negative 16 times 9 is minus 144, all over 8, or 28 plus or minus. We have 784 minus 144 is 640, all over 8. Now at this point you have some choices. You can either manually simplify 640, um, which I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Or I could use that large number and take the square root of it and do that in the calculator. But I'd rather have my numbers smaller before I bring in the calculator. So what I'm going to do is say 28 plus or minus. I'm going to break this down into 64 times 10. Isn't that 640? over 8, and I know that 64 is a perfect square. I can take the square root of 64, so now I have 28 plus or minus 8 radical 10 over 8. Now, if there is something that goes into 8 radical 10, 8, and 28, I could make that even smaller before I put it in the calculator, and I think what goes in is 4. So 4 goes into 8 twice, 4 goes into 8 twice, 4 goes into this 7 times, and what I have is 7 plus or minus 2 radical 10 over 2. Now how do we enter that in the calculator? Well, we're going to split it. We're going to say 7 plus 2 radical 10 over 2. I'm going to get that, and then I'm going to say 7 minus 2 radical 10 over 2. So I want to show you how that goes in the calculator. Let me clear this. So it's going to be 7 minus 2 square roots of 10. Now I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to hit divided by 2. So this one, I did the minus first, is point, I'm going to round that off, 0.34 seconds. We'll look at our drawing again in a minute. Now let's do this one. 7 plus 2 radical 10. So you notice on the calculator, first I did 7 minus 2 radical 10, and then I divided it by 2. Now I've got 7 plus 2 radical 10, hit enter and now divide that by 2, and I get about 
six, six seconds. If you wanted to round that off to 6.7, that would be okay also. Now, let's look at this in the context of our problem. We have two answers. Well, we said that this um, object that was projected would hit that height at two different times, once going up and once coming down. So this one was going up, this one, and this one was going down. That problem had a lot of work to it. I'm going to change color so you can kind of follow along with this next um, piece that we're doing. The next one says, when will it hit the ground? So going back to our drawing, at the time that it hits the ground right here, its height, or S of T, is equal to zero. So what I need to do for part C is I need to set my equation, negative 16T squared plus 112T plus 144, I need to set it equal to zero. The first thing that I'm going to do again is to multiply the whole thing by negative 1. So that's going to give me 16t squared minus 112t minus 144 equals 0. Now, let's check and see if 16 goes into 112, it does, and 144 divided by 16, it does. So that was good. So that means I can factor out a 16, unlike this one we did here, where all I could do was get my numbers smaller and then use the quadratic equation. So 16 as a GCF leaves me t squared minus 7t minus 9 equals 0. Are there factors of negative 9 that add up to negative 7? No. So this one also is not factorable but I can first get rid of that 16 by dividing by 16. t squared minus 7t minus 9 equals 0. And once again, I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula with smaller numbers. a equals 1, b is negative 7, c is negative 9. So I have t is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, or t equals 7 plus or minus square root of 49. This is going to be negative times negative is plus 36 all over 2. t equals 7 plus or minus square root of 85 all over 2. Now, here we're going to split it like we did on the last one. So t equals 7 plus radical 85 over 2. We'll get an answer. And t equals 7 minus radical 85 over 2. And we'll get an answer. Now let's see what happens. I'm going to put the calculator back up here. And I want to say 7 plus square root of 85, get that, and now let's divide that by 2, and I get 8.11, we're going to say 8.11 seconds till it hits the ground. Now is it going to hit the ground twice? It shouldn't, should it? It should hit the ground one time. So let's see what happens when we put in this other one. 7 minus square root of 85 that is a negative number, and when I divide it by 2, I get a negative. I get negative 1.11. Well, that has no meaning in the context of this problem, so we discard it, and we know that the object will hit the ground in 8.11 seconds. And it makes sense because it's got to be more seconds than when it was still off the ground, and in 6.7 seconds, it was still off the ground. There was a lot of work to that problem. Let's look at one more type of application with um, equations that are quadratic in form. Example 2, it says two cars left an intersection at the same time, one heading due north, the other heading due west. 
Sometime later, they were exactly 100 miles apart. Now, before we go any further, I need to kind of get this sketched. So here is the intersection, two cars. One went due north, so this is north. The other left the same intersection and went west. So that is west. And then at some point later in time, they were 100 miles apart. So this is 100 miles. All right. Well, you can see that I have a right triangle. That's why it said due north and due west to show you that this is 90 degrees. It says the car headed north had gone 20 miles farther than the car headed west. So I'm going to say let x equal the distance traveled west. So this is x. And then it says that the car headed north had gone 20 miles further. So this is x plus 20. And in case you haven't figured it out, this is a problem involving the Pythagorean theorem. So here is my a, my b, and my c. So I'm going to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or x squared plus x plus 20 squared equals 100 squared. x squared, if you factor or FOIL this out, x plus 20 times x plus 20, you're going to get x squared plus 40x plus 400 equals, when you square 100, 100 times 100, you get 10,000. Now, let's do some simplifying. This would be 2x squared plus 40x, oops, I forgot to put the plus here, plus 400 equals 10,000. To make the number smaller, I'm going to go through and divide everything by 2. I can do that. So that gives me x squared plus 20x plus 200 equals 5,000. And now I'm going to get it equal to 0 by subtracting a 5,000. So we have x squared plus 20x. You've got, if you need to do it on a calculator, you can do it in your head, 200 minus 5,000 gives us negative 4,800. So negative 4,800 equals 0. Now the question is, is, is that factorable? So negative 4,800, that adds up to positive 20. Well, I'll tell you a little hint. I know that if this was a 48 and a 2, that I could use 6 times 8. And if I look on my calculator, I know that 60 times 80 is 4,800, and they are 20 apart. So I'm going to use a 60 and an 80. One has to be positive, one negative, but with this being positive, I know the bigger one is positive. So I'm going to have x plus 80 times x minus 60 equals 0. Using the 0 factor property, x plus 80 equals 0, or x minus 60 equals 0. x equals negative 80, or x equals 60. Now I can only get one answer that's going to make sense here. If x represents a distance, can it be negative 80 miles? We discard that. Even though the algebra is correct and it works in the equation, it makes no sense in the context of this problem. So I know that x is 60 miles and x plus 20 is 80 miles. So my car heading west went 60 miles and my car heading north went 80 miles using the Pythagorean theorem.